Hello everyone, it's April 28th, 2020. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's edition. So today we're going to be doing some drills for rolled chords. And of course, a rolled or broken chord is such a typical harp sound and something I, I of course, I covered in one of my very, very early episodes many years ago. You should be seeing a link up here. Hopefully some insightful and useful stuff that I said there. But today, I'm just going to focus on some drills that you can do with me. You can play along with me. It's also a way to take advantage of this new metronome app that I, that I just downloaded a couple days ago. And the beauty of this app is that it lets you gradually increase the tempo without, on the physical app, uh, physical metronome, having to do that yourself. So I know I have that metronome rant, but um, you're talking about how I like just the plain basic actual physical metronome. But this is an example when an app is awesome. And thanks for Kevin for his comment about this app and suggestion to try it. So you can play along with me. And, and what we're going to do, there'll be a link to a time-coded a time coded link both in this video description of this video and also down in the comments, a pinned comment. So if you want to come back you know, every day and, and play a specific drill along with me, you can just click that link rather than having to listen to this intro every time. And one thing just to keep in mind, anytime we're kind of drilling a repetitive thing, and, and rolled chords definitely benefit from that, right? It's We can try to practice smart and we can try to be efficient, but some things just take time, right? And, and just to just put in that time and, and do it again. And working with a metronome can be great for that. But we also want to make sure that we have at least a decent grasp over the technique so that we're not practicing bad habits. We're not going over and over a, maybe a bad, you know, are we doing this rather than a nice full close, right? Um, so just trying to make sure that you're not, uh, you're not jumping ahead of yourself. So repetitive practice, grad, starting slow and gradually getting faster and faster is great when you're trying to drill a specific thing as long as the underlying technique is not you're not struggling too much with that anyway. It's just something to, to bear in mind. So I'm not really going to be focused on technique, though I will mention, of course, that trying to close firmly, I'm going to be playing quite loudly, right? And trying to use lots of strength and relaxation between each note as much as possible. So let's get into the drills. So I'm going to start by doing some dotted rhythms. I'm going to do a three note chord. And instead of just doing a root position, I'm going to do a first inversion just to shake things up a little bit. So it's going to be a C chord. You could play any C chord with this, right? A root, a first or a second inversion. But I'm just going to do this first inversion. And so with a daughter rhythm, right, I'm going to go, I'm going to start with, I think, long, short, long. And the nice thing about this is it's a chance to relax and then play a fast, right? So relax, fast, Fast relax, fast relax. Again, using lots of strength. So let me just, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from 80 beats per minute all the way up to 180, and I'm increasing one beat per minute every two clicks.
opposite rhythm. So next we're going to take that same chord, that same shape, and we're going to, I'm going to actually increase it once every click. And this time we're going to do a rolled chord. We're going to do one, two, three, one, two, three. It's going to be even a little bit faster and we're going to start to get to feel almost as if we're doing a rolled chord. And pause. So now let's do some four finger chords. I'm going to go back to that first setting where it's increasing a little bit more slowly. And we're going to do, so let's, let's again, maybe not just do a root. Let's do, let's do a second inversion and a root in the right. Actually, let's do that, but with a G chord. So again, you can play any, any of the, any G chord shape you would like along with this and we're going to do we won't do both sets of dotted rhythms but we will do one set of dotted rhythms and I think the one that's a little bit more difficult is when you go when you're doing a fast slow across the hands so we're going to go slow fast slow fast slow like that
we're going to do those as a little chord. And I think what we're going to do is we'll again like have click, click, click. Right here, that missing click at the end. And so it'll be a little bit faster than these three note rolled chords. I'm going to change it once every two clicks. And again, a pause in between each, each iteration to get time to reset rather than continuous sound that we had with the daughter rhythm. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I think, one click per root. So, click, click. So, I'm going to do that. It's, it's going to be a little bit, definitely faster than the three note chords. Um, but I should mention that if you want, you can use the little gear icon and play this back at, for example, half speed if that would prove more useful. And again, we're going to take, in this case, instead of having continuous sound, we're going to have a pause between each iteration. We might actually do two bars as it gets faster. Pause. So by this point then, I think if we go and try to just do a rolled chord, they should hopefully be sounding pretty good. Now again, if you find that any of these drills are too fast, the start, so it doesn't matter if they end too fast, right? Because you can always end earlier, you can just fall out. But if they start too fast, try going to the gear icon on YouTube and changing the playback speed for the drills and seeing, it might sound kind of strange, but it might be an option. And um, again, this can be applied, this type of practice can be applied to anything repetitive. So maybe downward chords. But again, trying to make sure that the technique behind it is solid as well, so that again, we're not practicing a whole bunch of time doing something incorrectly. Um, and so for, for me, what I would stress would be that feeling of closing, that feeling of strength, of, of really connecting to the strings. I certainly, when I practice, I use a, a musician's earplug in my right ear because it can get quite loud because you're wanting to build that strength and, and use that strength. 
Um, and, and again, potentially a metronome app like this can be quite useful. I'll throw a link down in the, in the description, but also comment if you have, are aware of, aware of similar, similar apps. And this, what I was using was the so-called the practice mode where you can set, you know, every bar, every two bars, etc. And because for me, I like to have it just each bar be one beat. So I'm not hearing tick, boom, 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 tick, boom, boom, boom. I'm just saying tick, 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 one sound, one beat, no subdivided beats. That means each bar is just one click and I can increase that. I can increase it five beats per minute, every bar or three bars or whatever, lots of, lots of variables. And then you can start it going. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm excited to use this in some of my own practice. And I think it's just a potentially a useful, useful tool. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope you have fun. Again, you're welcome to come back and, and spend some time with me every day if you want, working on these broken chords and hopefully getting them sounding even more beautiful and uh, more, more harpy. So hope you enjoyed that. I will see you in two weeks time. Cheers. <laughs>